These people are waiting in a line, a long line. What are they waiting for? Not textbooks or the new Harry Potter novel. They're waiting for health care, government managed health care. All over the world, people wait days, weeks, even months to receive treatment from their government run health care system. Is this where America is headed? Is this what you want? Since last month's passage of a health care reform bill by the House of Representatives, we've taken a giant step in that direction. Although advocates of the plan make it sound appealing, even compassionate, it is a congressional catastrophe. <laughs> there are three significant problems that should have you worried. It will, it will rob us of medical choice. <laughs> it will rob us of medical choice. It will cause medical innovation to evaporate, and it will be a crushing burden to our fragile economy. Let's take a closer look at each of these concerns. First, medical decisions belong to you, not the government. Michael was an educated, hard-working father of three. He also was a member of his bishopric. He also lived in Canada under socialized medicine. In 2007, his daughter, a nurse practitioner, noticed that her father would forget familiar names or stop in the middle of a sentence. When Michael finally got in to see a doctor, he was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor. He needed surgery immediately, but no matter how much the family pleaded, he couldn't be scheduled for a life-saving surgery for six months. Before he could be operated on, Michael passed away. Think this could never happen in America? Think again. Second, it could cause medical innovation to quickly dry up. American Free Enterprise currently generates more life-saving medical innovations than all other countries combined. <clears throat> but if government were to take charge, you could expect that innovation to, to, <laughs> to come to a halt. The free market is unmatched in its ability to inspire human genius and motivate people to create new ways to save and improve lives. Certain medical advances simply wouldn't exist without the incentive of the free market. Knee replacements and artificial heart valves were created for both the advancement of medicine and for profit. America's leadership in medical science, education, research, biotechnology, and pharmacology is the direct result of the free market. Finally, there will be crippling costs. Congress never reaches into its own pocket to pay for a government plan. It reaches into yours and mine. Proponents of the plan project a cost of about $100 billion a year. Economist Walter Williams claims that such cost estimates are lies, whether they come from a Democrat or a Republican president, citing Medicare as the prime example. When it was launched in 1966, Medicare costs $3 billion. President Lyndon Johnson estimated that by 1990, costs would climb to about $12 billion. The actual numbers? In 1990, Medicare topped $107 billion. That's nearly 10 times the projected annual cost. Today, Medicare is a bankrupt and broken system with an annual tab of $420 billion and no signs of leveling off. So what's the real cost of the new health care plan? The Heritage Foundation estimates that a 10-year cost of the bill could be in excess of $2.5 trillion, new debt we will all have to share. Dr. Joseph Kramer, a local physician and columnist in the Deseret News, notes <clears throat> that government-run medicine will increase waste duplication, 
and mistakes while interfering with the patient-doctor relationship. He claims that mortgaging our future for an inferior system is not only stupid, it's shameful. When it comes to healthcare, we cannot allow the federal government to take it over and then dole it out as a new entitlement program. <clears throat> if signed into law, the impact would be felt instantly with a burdensome bureaucracy, reduced medical choice, and inescapable tax increases. The current healthcare system is not broken. Necessary improvements will come, as they always have, through increased competition, innovation, and free market choice. It's time to get out of line and take a stand. We need to face the terrible truth of what will happen if we turn over our health care to the federal government. It must be stopped, and the Senate is the next battleground. Democracy demands informed participation. Email your senators tonight and let them know why you are against this proposal. As Thomas Jefferson observed, he who trades liberty for security deserves neither and will lose both.